Do you have a purchase invoice that's in US dollars and you are in the UK? How do you deal with that in your Xero account? Now, we know that you can upgrade and you can include multi-currency, but what if it's very rare that you have these invoices and you don't want to upgrade at this stage? Let's head into Xero and I'll show you how you can enter a purchase invoice in Xero when it's not in your own currency, even when you don't have Xero multi-currency. We're on our Xero dashboard and we're going to go to the files section because we know that we have a purchase invoice sitting here that we need to enter. I'm going to select the purchase invoice and I'm going to choose add to new bill. So the bill is on the left of our screen. So the main thing we can see is that this bill is in US dollars. So we want to input the information in Xero. The date of the transaction was the 1st of November 2020 and the due date is 30 days later. I'm on a demo company and the demo company has multi-currency which is why there is this box here but what we're talking about is when you don't have multi-currency so let's just assume that this option does not exist. So we fill in our description we get to the quantity, that's fine, we know that. Now we get to the unit price. Now the unit price is $5. Clearly, we're not inputting figures in dollars, we're inputting figures in British pounds. So what we need to do, first of all, is we need to convert this invoice. XE.com is a good place to go. That's where the zero exchange rate figures come from if you were using multi-currency. So I'm going to go online. I'm going to go to XE.com. I've chosen, this is important, the date of my invoice. So it's the 1st of November 2020. And for US dollars, the exchange rate to GBP is not point, and I'm going to say 773. So I know that an invoice for $1,000 is equivalent to £773. So I'm back into zero. And now what I want to know is the unit price. My full invoice is going to be 773. So I'm going to do a sneaky thing because zero has its own calculator. I'm going to do 773 and I'm going to divide it by 200. And zero has calculated there the unit price in pounds, not in dollars. Let's go into my cost of goods sold. So purchase from the US, so zero rated expenses. And here we have our total invoice is £773. So we're just going to approve and that invoice is in our system. So now we're a month down the line. If we go back to XE and we choose a month later, now we can see that the GB figure this time will be £747. So let's go to our bill. It was 773 now, when we pay that bill, because the dollar has dropped in value, we would expect that that would only cost us £747. So on the 1st of December, you make a payment to Dallas Decor. You make it based on the exchange rate at that time, and it costs you £747. Now it might be that you have bank charges on top of that. So let's say you've got £15 in bank charges because you're making a payment to a foreign bank. So when we go to our bank and we go to our bank reconciliation, here is the payment to Dallas Decor. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just to get my head around what's happened. So I'm going to type a note in here. So first of all, we know that the invoice was £773. We also know that there were bank charges of £15 and then we also know that the exchange difference and it's a gain because the US dollar has devalued. The invoice was 773 at the new exchange rate it's only 747 so that is £26 of exchange gain. So I'm going to save that and that is just my mental note. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to add these transactions. So I'm going to spend money and I'm going to input the bank charges amount. So I'm going to say Dallas Decor. We need to choose the date, which was the 1st of December. I'm going to say it's one at 15 pound. I'm going to pick up the bank charges code, bank fees, which is 404. 
and then I'm going to save that transaction. I'm also going to add another transaction, but this time we know it's a receive money because we've gained on the exchange rate. Again, it's the date of the payment, 1st of December, and I need a reminder that it's £26, and I need to have set up already an exchange code. So if you don't have that, you go to your chart of accounts and you would set it up. Happy with that transaction, I'm now going to save it. Okay, I hope you're still with me. Back on the dashboard and we go into our bank reconciliation. Now, all that we need to do is the matching. So we know what this matches to. We know it matches to the invoice plus the bank charges, less the exchange gain. So we go to find and match. And I'm going to tick this box because I need to show a received item because the exchange is a gain. So I'm going to tick that box and I'm going to go to the search and see what it gives me when I search for the word Dallas. So I'm picking up the invoice, which was the 1st of November, and then I'm picking up the two further transactions on the payment date, which is the bank fees on the 1st of December of £15 and the exchange of 26 It goes green once we've done that. If we unticked one, so we don't have the exchange dealt with, and we scroll down and we can see that the total is out by £26. Select the exchange difference and now we can go to OK. It's a bit convoluted, but that is how you would deal with a non-GBP purchase invoice when you don't have multi-currency. So if I recap what we did there, we had a purchase invoice and the purchase invoice was in US dollars. We went to xe.com and we got the exchange rate and we input it in sterling at the exchange rate based on the date of the invoice, i.e. the 1st of November. Then nothing happened until a month later, the 1st of December. All that you're doing is going to your bank and saying, can you pay Dallas Decker on our behalf? Now we've added a little complication here, but this is real life. We've said when you make that payment to the US, the chances are you will have bank fees and they might be added to the transaction. So what we ended up doing on the 1st of December, we ended up making a payment. Now it doesn't match to the invoice because of two things, the exchange rate and the bank fees. So we went to zero and we manually input these transactions. So if you recall, we input a spend money transaction for the bank fees, dating at the 1st of December, and then we input a receive money for the exchange gain. Obvious, you code the bank fees to bank fees, exchange gain, we needed to have an account set up in our chart of accounts to cope with the exchange transaction. And the final thing we had to do was reconcile the bank payment, matching it to the invoice, the bank fees and the exchange gain. So what that then means, if we run a profit and loss account in zero, just so you understand completely what's happening, and let's look at the two months when this took place, 1st of November to the 31st of December. Okay, so what does it show? Well, it shows the purchase as £773 because that is based on the exchange the day that that transaction was entered into zero, the date of the invoice. We also have bank fees. Now, we've got £45 in here, but if we look, we can see that 15 out of that is what we entered. And the final thing that we'll see on our profit and loss account is the £26 as an exchange loss, but it's in brackets because it's an actual gain. So that is how you deal with a purchase invoice when it's not in your home currency. In our case, it wasn't in GBP, it was in US dollars. Now you might look at this and think, whew, that was a bit complicated. Life would be easier if I had multi-currency. Well, you can obviously upgrade to have multi-currency in zero, but I just wanted to show you, if you don't have multi-currency, this is how I would enter this type of transaction in zero. You end up with the same result. You end up with your cost at the exchange rate at the date that it, of your invoice and any exchange based on when you make payment. I hope you find the video useful. I hope it's maybe explained some things that you weren't sure about before. If you did like the video, a thumbs up would be great. If you've got any questions, any comments, please add them below and I'll do my best to respond. If you know MD that would benefit from this video, then please share it. But until next time, happy zeroing.